This is so ridiculous. I don't even know why I have multiples of a lot of this fabric. Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome to The Sewing Report. I wasn't sure what I was gonna do a video about next, so I thought I would do sort of a vlog style thing. Yes, this is a different camera, and I have been feeling sort of a creativity block this week. Ever since I finished the BTS DIY video, I really wasn't sure what to do next. I don't know if this happens to you. Sometimes, especially being like a YouTuber and doing sewing stuff, I sort of feel like I have some pressure to make like a great video. And sometimes I don't have great ideas. I don't know what I'm gonna do here, but I thought maybe we could go through some of my fabric collection. I don't know, the last few days, I just haven't really felt like doing much. I've been doing a lot of like tax stuff, which has been super fascinating. I'm being a little sarcastic. And I've also, for some reason, watched all of Desi Perkins and Stephen Perkins like fertility journey vlogs which is a little strange because I'm officially child-free, so I'm not really sure why you need to know about IVF, but weirdly, I've learned a lot about IVF in the past few days that I did not know. It is kind of interesting though. I don't know, do you ever watch videos and stuff that you will never do and have no connection to, but you just watch it anyways? I also sometimes watch tarantula channels and I hate spiders. I'm terrified of spiders, but for some reason, I just keep watching these channels like Exotic Lair where they like feed tarantulas cockroaches, another thing I absolutely hate. And I just can't stop watching those things. If you're kind of new to the channel, I thought maybe I would share a little bit about myself. I know I've gotten, you know, a few new subscribers probably since I last did a video like this. So I'm here in Florida. I'm just chilling. My husband's at work right now and I'll be honest, I feel a little strange vlogging or shooting anything when he's home. Even if he's in the other room or something, I don't know, I just feel a little bit like self-conscious about it. So I'm a lot more comfortable shooting my videos when he's not home, which is quite frequently. But sometimes, you know, I'm like, I, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. And I decided, you know, I'm also wearing makeup today, so I didn't feel super hideous, although, I've been trying out some new makeup products and like today's, I, I do not like. So this is sort of my like third day hair. Um, I also don't shower every day, which is kind of gross, but it's kind of a time thing. I'm kind of lazy in that regard and I don't really like spending a lot of time. I only like to do my hair like twice a week. That's about like the max for me. I don't know why, but I keep buying more foundation. I don't really need more foundation, but I keep trying different things, thinking that will be like the perfect foundation and it never is. So today's foundation, I'm, I'm not loving. I thought I would kind of try out some new makeup stuff. I've also been watching a lot of makeup tutorials for whatever reason. And uh, today's foundation, it, is very is very shiny so probably not a winner so i don't know what i'm gonna do with this makeup and i've also been on some acne treatment that makes my skin pretty flaky so i don't know if you can see like up close but i feel like my skin is very scaly and i've been exfoliating like twice a day so I don't know what's going on. I kind of hope this is temporary, but I'm on something called different. It's an over-the-counter acne treatment and uh, it's, it's fairly reasonably priced. And I feel like on the acne front, it's working just on the skin condition though. It does really dehydrate you and it, yeah, your skin is dry and I've had to moisturize so much and I've been trying to really up my water intake which has been sort of interesting. That also really makes you have to go to the bathroom every five minutes. So I don't know why I'm rambling, but you know, I don't know, I just kind of feel like talking. So here we are, we're hanging out in the sewing room, which by the way, for tax right off purposes, I need to figure out how big this room is so I can tell the accountant I'm working with, you know, how much of my home is used for a home office. So that's been fun. This is, there's a lot of stuff about like this YouTube stuff behind the scenes that is like pretty boring. And I know everybody tries to make their videos look fun and exciting. Sometimes behind the scenes though, it is like pretty boring. 
I don't really leave the house much. I know for COVID and everything, people have been like, oh my gosh, I can't leave the house. What am I, you know, I can't go out and go to restaurants and like go to parties. And I never really did those things anyway. So when I kind of looked around and saw people freaking out about it, I'm like, that's kind of my everyday life. I can't believe you hate it that much because I almost never leave my house. My weekly routine really consists of going grocery shopping. And the only thing I would say for me that's changed is wearing a mask at the grocery store. Other than that, my day-to-day -day life is, is pretty similar to what it was last year and the year before. So I know it's been kind of a rough, I know we're coming up on a year here since quarantine started. It, we're still sort of in quarantine, I guess. Maybe for some inspiration's sake, I thought maybe going through some of my fabric might spark something. I don't even know what I'm gonna do my next video on, guys. Like, what what do I do here? What do I do? First, I wanna show you my Walmart cube storage, though. You've probably seen this in videos because I've had this for a while in place, but it's totally dope, and I love that I've kinda added some of my BTS-related stuff. I know this is weird, but I really wanted to display my empties of BTS coffee. This is where I keep the sewing machine while I'm not using it. All right, let's hang out here over near my cabinet. And yes, that is a Walmart box. Uh, that's where I keep my Etsy shipping supplies. If you don't know, I do have an Etsy shop where I've started to sell sewing kits and some sewing supplies. So you're welcome to check that out. It is the sewing report shop, obviously. And it's been really fun, although I will say it was a little bit more involved than I might have assumed to set up an Etsy shop. And I've also been thinking about doing a video about the process for me and what all was involved in actually getting an Etsy shop up and running. I know when you tell people you sew, the first thing people say is like, you should sell those on Etsy or something. And I don't think they necessarily understand that it's not like that easy. I mean, it was, pretty simple, but there were some steps involved and there was sales tax and everything. So if you guys want, I would be happy to do a video breaking down my own experience with setting up an actual Etsy shop and doing it legally and all that stuff, some of the business side of things. So let me know below in the comments if that's something you're interested in, because I have been thinking about doing something like that, because that is something that I know many of you guys might be considering and maybe that would help you make a decision like, yeah, that sounds good to me. Or, you know, no, Jen, that's way too much work. Because it is, it was a little bit of work to set up. Now I've got everything sort of in place. Although for the first time I am hiring a real CPA this year to do our taxes, just because with the Etsy edition of the business, things are a little more complicated. So let's take a look at what we got in here. And yes, I do wear these sweatpants pretty much every day. I wash them a couple times a week, so they're not, you know, super dirty or anything, but these are my default sweatpants. I got them from Aldi. Yeah, and the embarrassing thing is I've had some of this fabric for like seven years. And I think in 2021, I, I've done this before, I'm really going to try not to buy new fabric. Clearly, I don't really need new fabric. I have tons of it here. Plus sometimes people send me stuff. So I really don't think I need to make any big fabric purchases for the most part this year. So a lot of times like quilting cotton will come in a really nice little like zippy bag here. And I usually try to keep my fabric in the bags like this. I love this fabric. This is cotton and steel. One of my favorite fabric lines, although I know the designers with Cotton Steel have since left and they are doing a new thing called Ruby Star Society. But I really love the like OG Cotton and Steel prints. They are some of my favorite. I also got this totally cute panda print fabric that was Cotton and Steel. And recently I did use this in a video. And I will say that the reason I tend not to promote certain fabric lines in videos is because the fabric, by the time I'm using it in a video, it's hard to find. So I don't want to frustrate people if you can't get the fabric. I know it kind of sucks. And I do kind of wish fabric manufacturers would do maybe fewer collections, but also have reprints available because 
right now as it stands, a lot of this designer stuff, once it's gone, it's gone. And it's really hard to get again, except on like the resale market. So here's more cotton and steel. I don't even know what I'm gonna do with all this fabric. And I'll also take you into my, my other room and we'll I'll show you. I also found like a bunch of Liberty of London prints that I bought years ago because I got a great deal on it and I still have yet to cut into that fabric. So I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with it. It's so pretty, but I'm like really afraid to sew with it. I know you might be going through that too where you just have that fabric that you're just really afraid to use because it's too nice. Oh, this is another print I love. And these were fabrics I pre-washed. So like this cotton and steel print and then this oh, is such, okay, so the backstory on this fabric, this is by Blend and the designer is Christian Howell. The reason I know the designer is because I used to work with uh, Christian's husband at CNN. So her husband is George Howell at CNN. And I remember one of my other coworkers saying, hey, do you know George's wife? She designs fabric and stationery and stuff. So I looked her up, I loved her work. I thought it was so pretty. She does florals and like really cute stuff like this. So I went ahead and purchased a few of her prints. They were pretty hard to find at the time. Obviously, yeah, now you can't really get this print at all but it's so gorgeous and I I don't I had meant to maybe do like a piece of clothing or something out of this I did wash this so it's ready to go in that regard it's so cute I forgot what the line was called what modern okay it was from the modern eclectic line by Christian Howell and it's just so pretty I also have so this one is on like more of an aqua background she also had this on a white background and I had that print as well. And then there was like a complimentary geometric print. I have that here somewhere. Where did it go? All right, it's like, okay, oh gosh. This is like all gonna, like at some point this could like all come crashing down. So that's probably gonna happen. Let me try to fold this back up. That's the hard thing about fabric is once you open it up, it's really hard to get it back into place, okay. Here we go. Oh geez, okay. A while back is kind of a joke. I made some embroidered towels that said Epstein didn't kill himself, but this one was done with metallic thread that just didn't really work out. So this is gonna be uh, a test piece that I'll use for testing out other embroidery designs. That's what I do with blanks that I make a mistake on and trust me, it happens. This is a, oh geez, like a patchwork Sample I just kind of made this was two and a half inch squares again another cotton and steel print I don't know what my plans were for this But I put it together and I did this while I was doing those holiday drawstring bags And I just had some extra ones of those. This is Ruby Star Society. Obviously, I'm a fan of the these designers um, This is from one of their newer lines and I bought I, I think a yard or two of this. It's such a pretty like diamond print, I, and I love fabrics that have metallics in them. Also, I don't really know, if you have suggestions for what I should do with some of these prints, let me know and I will definitely consider them. And also let me know below in the comments, out of all the fabric you're seeing here, what is your favorite? All right, another cotton and steel. So this is from the Michael Miller Couture Solids line. It's sort of like a cotton with some sheen on one side and I use this as a quilt backing, but I like it because it's a wide back. So I think it was like 108 inches wide. So you could use this as backing for a larger quilt and it would work out pretty well for that. Oh, the panda fabric. I love this panda fabric. It is so, it is so cute. Like I uh, can't even get over it. This is PUL fabric. I forgot why I bought this, but I have it. And uh, a lot of people use it to make like cloth diapers and stuff, but I don't have any kids. So I don't remember why I bought this. Uh, I think this is so in stabilizer. I don't even know. Like we're just kind of going through. This is a few orphaned quilt blocks. And I want to make this into a quilted pillow. So yeah, this is kind of a catch all for a lot of stuff. But this was, uh, I made a quilt of these blocks called the uh, Scrappy Hunter Star Quilt. And then I had a bunch of blocks left over. 
So I found some of these and I, you know, put them together and then I put this border on it. And eventually I'm going to turn it into a quilted pillow cover for that Ikea 20 by 20 inch pillows. But the crazy thing is that I thought I had more of those Ikea uh, pillow cushion inserts. My favorite, it's called the Fredrar line. They're like 10 to 15 bucks and they're downfilled. So they're like, they're the good stuff. And I thought I had more of the 20 by 20 pillows, but I don't. I don't have any, so I need to get some more so I can fill this insert. And then I think I'll give it as a gift to somebody. Um, I do have a lot of friends and family that do like handmade things. Um, I also have another relative who loves quilts. She doesn't quilt herself, but she loves buying quilts like the Amish quilts. I gifted her one of the uh, holiday drawstring bags and she really liked it. I also gave her that snowflake pillow I made over the holidays, the Christmassy one with the really pretty red metallic thread and that worked out really nicely. All right, this is some random, oh geez. I don't, I need to organize my scraps. I don't know what I'm doing here. Literally all over the place, I just have like pieces like this or pieces like this. And I need to definitely get a better organizational system. I did this past week organize my bathroom and I feel really good about it because I just cleared out a bunch of clutter. It felt really good to have that space organized and I have a lot more room in my my towel closet in the bathroom because I just kind of made the space more efficient. Another print that I love, this is an Amy Butler print. I don't know, does Amy Butler, is she still even designing new fabrics lines? I'll have to check. Cause she was, she, she was one of my like OG favorite designers. And this is a really old print that I managed to get a hold of. I have one yard. I think I got it from fabric.com and I really love this print. I think I have another print that's kind of like this. More cotton and steel. BTS inspired towel. Does I embroidered with a design. That's a line from the song Dynamite. I'm Diamond, you know I glove. If you have not seen the BTS music video for Dynamite, you need to leave this video right away and watch it because it is oh, such a great video, such a good song. It's all in English, so that was sort of their way of reaching out to to the English speaking countries like us here in America. All right, here's some quilt batting. Yeah, really random. Oh my gosh. Okay, a piece of, uh, I think this is Pellon Flex Foam, I believe. Yeah, I just have some random pieces like this pretty much everywhere. More cotton and steel, oh my gosh. You know what though, this is good to go through because at least it's a visual reminder of all the fabric I have, so that's good. This is actually a cloth bag that came with um, a sheet set I bought from Target. Fusible interfacing. All right, this is Insel Bright. This is the stuff I use for pot holders or anything that is going to be exposed to heat, like hot, you know, hot pads. I also use this for coasters just because it's a good insulator. This is Allison Glass from her, what was it? What was the line called? I really like this fabric. I love the triangles. I actually made a skirt out of this fabric. It is so cute and I've made some masks out of it. This is Robert Kaufman Essex Linen, a good like classic fabric, waffle weave towel fabric. So I've used it for quite a few things, but it's really absorbent, it's nice. You could use this to make a really nice robe, although in all honesty, it's probably cheaper to buy an already made robe because I think this was fairly expensive per yard. It was, it would be definitely cheaper to buy a bathrobe out of the same material than to try to make it yourself. So, but hey, that's sewing for you, right? This is a panel I made when I made those cosmetic bags for Mother's Day. This is just an extra quilted panel I made, but this was one of the first fabrics I literally ever bought. I got it from a quilt shop in Atlanta and it's a uh, Kathy Facet, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, fabric. I got it from the sale section. I still have some pieces of this fabric. It is super cute. And I used this on the first quilt I ever made. Mustang fabric from Quilt Cotton and Steel. I have this in a few different colors. I also have this in the canvas substrate and I really like the canvas. It's really cool. Um, and it's a little more heavy duty, so you could use it for 
a few different projects. I still have leftover prints despite all the making I did with this line this year. I still do have more scraps. This is, I bought a fat quarter bundle of this cotton and steel holiday line like three years ago. All right, a good solid in like kind of a darker lime green. This, I believe this is a, is a Joel Dewberry print. And I forgot why I bought this, but I have used it in some different projects. This is a Carolyn Friedlander print. I love her as a designer. This is more Ruby Star Society fabric. I got this geometric metallic print. I got it in two colors. I got it in the like beige and I got it in this raspberry color. It's gonna take me like a half an hour to even get through this cabinet. And I have, in full disclosure, I have a lot more fabric than what's in here. So I don't know if you're aware, but I am now officially a reseller of, uh, I'm a retailer, yes, legit now of some fabric lines. And one of the lines that I can get fabric for is called Figo Fabrics. It's a really cool um, company. They're, they're making some really like different prints. I also did place an order for some holiday fabric for next year that I just thought was amazing. So I think I'm going to be making some ready to sew kits out of that holiday fabric. So be on the lookout for that. It's from the Peppermint Collection by Dana Willard. I really like Dana Willard. Uh, I love her YouTube channel, Made Every Day, and I really do appreciate her as a fabric designer. She's very talented and I love her themes and I love her designs. I have several prints from her boardwalk collection that's like food themed. Actually, I probably have it right in here somewhere. I got this fabric such a long time ago and I had to have it at the time, but I have not done anything with it. It's the Tula Pink Cat collection. I obviously like cats because I had a cat and I really did feel like the cats in this print kind of looked like my cat just kind of in her like whole like facial expression and everything looks like Gato. I think in 2021 I need to do something with the cat fabric. It's too cute. I have it in like a few different colors. Some of the uh, coordinating fabric and it does really go with the cat prints. I got two yards of the cat eye print. I just think this is a really, I love all the colors in this print. You know, just the jewel tones, the raspberries, the green, so pretty. I don't know what I'm gonna do with the cat stuff, but I should, I feel like I should do something with it. Oh, this is a cool one. This is from Sarah Lawson's Fantasia collection and it is unicorns. And I also have a, I believe it's like a yard or a half yard bundle of this fabric. I have it in my other room. So this is a really pretty art gallery, really silky fabric. Isn't this just adorable? I got some yardage of the ice cream fabric and I made a skirt out of it. And I also got knit fabric out of this one. And then she also had another print where it was like, it was like a black background. And then in like different fun, bold colors, there were flavors written like strawberry, raspberry, stuff like that. So this is a really cute line. Oh, I'm glad I still have some fat quarters of it because this was such an awesome fabric. This is one of my all time favorite prints. This is cotton and steel. And I forgot what the name of it was. Wow, this is from 2014, oh my gosh. They made this, this was sort of part of their basics collection. And this came in a lot of different colors. So I did at the time buy quite a few of the colors, but this was one of my favorites. I love the color mint green and I liked the gold. I think it's so like elegant looking. I also have this in a gold, like just the gold background. And I think it had like silver metallic on it. So I have some of that. All right, oh, this is one of the oldest fabrics I own. Oh my gosh, Cynthia Raleigh. And I got this. I love the stripes of this print. I think it's so pretty. And I did buy this in a few different coordinating prints. And I used this as quilt binding for a very small quilt I made. And it just looked so cool on the bias. It looked awesome. There was this print, this is navy blue. And it's got like some really cool geometric circles. I also had this in aqua. And I made a fabric basket that I still have over in my other craft area. This was just a cool print. I forgot where I got this, but I bought this online. 
and I just thought the print was cool to hello on it. I love colorful fabric. I love whimsical fabric. I love fun novelty fabric, like anything really cool. Oh, the dinosaur print. This is a Lizzie House print in, um, was it called Natural History Belief? And I have a few different dinosaur prints in, cause it comes in this green color and then it came in purple. I also have the gem, she had like a gem print where it looked like gemstones. And she also had one with whales on it and it was just really cool stuff. I, I have like a few prints from the line. That's one of my favorite fabric lines. I don't know if you guys have a favorite fabric line, but I certainly have some of mine. Solids are still underrated. You can never go wrong with a good solid. And sometimes you just need a solid to go with something. Oh, this was a cool print I got. Oh, I forgot what the line was called. And I think the woman that designed this, I don't even think she's designing fabric anymore, but it's like an old style map. This was such a cool fabric. Oh, Mustangs in the canvas. I love the colors of this though. Oh, this is the coordinating print to that Christian Howell um, modern eclectic line. So this was a real fun one. And I think this one, it looks like it's pre-washed too. So I think I intended to make some sort of clothing with this. I don't know why I bought this. I had some purpose for it. I just don't know what that is. All right, so this is just some plain canvas I got, I think from Michaels or something. Pro tip, if you surge the edges of your fabric before pre-washing it, it will stop it from fraying so you won't have to worry about all those strings in your washer or dryer. Oh, this is a really cool Anna Maria Horner print. It's Pegasus fabric. I like horses, unicorns, and pegasuses. Maybe I'm like five, I don't know. Still young at heart. And I really like this like tiger print. I thought this was super cute. I'm having a hard time holding this stuff up. And before I do anything else, I'm definitely going to need to organize this. All right, I'm having a really hard time holding this stuff up. I think it's going to fall over any second now. This is so ridiculous. I don't even know why I have multiples of a lot of this fabric. I really need help with this scrap situation. I don't even know how it got to this point or how much I've spent in fabric. I mean, it has to be a lot of money. If at any point in time in a future video, I mention buying new fabric, please call me out on it. For the most part, I am not gonna need new fabric unless it's maybe a fabric type that I don't have or if it's like for kits. And because obviously it's really hard for me to make kits out of some of the fabric I have because I don't have enough of it. This is so heavy that my foot is falling asleep under the weight of all the fabric. That's how crazy this is, guys. But wait, there's more. So this is the Liberty Prince I was telling you guys about. I have three yards of each one and I have four total. They're super cool looking. Where's the other ones? This is some really pretty eyelet I got like on Black Friday a few years ago and I still have yet to use it. Some really cute pom-pom trim, Christmas stuff, stabilizer for embroidery, some flannel, some orphaned quilt blocks. I don't even know felt, the zipper pouch I made, some mesh fabric. Oh, this is the, I think it's a yard bundle of Sarah Lawson's uh, Fantasia line and it, that one was like super cool. This is some pink terry cloth. I do have plans to make some like spa type items. Oh, and here is, okay, yes, more of that infamous cotton and steel print that I really like. I have it in pretty much, I think I have it in most of the colorways they made it in. And here are the other two Liberty of London prints. So super cool fabric. I just still don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I've had that fabric for like four years. I was originally at some point going to make some stuffed animals and I bought these poly pellets, still haven't used them. And yes, there's more in here. Some flannel, some just scrap solids and stuff. All right, yeah, there's quite a bit in here. Some randomness stuff. Oh my gosh, it's like there's fabric everywhere, guys. I'm telling you. And last, I have fabric under my bed. You may remember this really cool lemony yellow print. I used this in a jacket I made. And then this is all from, I believe, Fashion Fabrics Club. I think this is pink shirting fabric. The 
This is cotton wall and this is some sort of like stretchy, like stuff you could use to make dress pants or something. And then this is actually silk, but I don't even know how to use this or what I'm gonna do with it. So it's, it's just here. So that was kind of embarrassing and I think I have a problem. But thank you guys so much for watching this vlog of my fabric addiction. If you're new here, I would highly recommend checking out some of the beginner sewing videos. I think they'll be helpful to you. And let me know below in the comments what kind of projects you'd like to see me make, what are you interested in, and do you feel like I'm a fabric addict? That's a real question there. I'm Jen with The Sewing Report. I'll see you guys again in the next video.